Kia ora whanau. welcome back. Wellness Wednesday with me. I'm Troy from Black Dog Survivors and Support Riders and welcome back to the Black Dog Lounge. Tonight, part two of our little mini-series exploring the common mental health challenges facing New Zealand today. And just a quick reminder, tonight we're exploring schizophrenia. So, got my coffee? I'm ready to go. Welcome back. So I cheated a little bit, I finished my coffee and Honey had prepared this awesome Indonesian vegetable and beef soup with potato fritter things and it was just fantastic. So I feel much much better, almost ready to head to bed. But anyway, tonight we're not talking food, we're talking schizophrenia and I'm going to start off with discussing some of the possible causes of schizophrenia and before I do I just want to remind everyone that I am not a medical professional I am simply somebody who loves motorcycling and has a passionate um, interest in mental health challenges uh, particularly those facing New Zealand today hence this series so what are some of the possible causes of schizophrenia and like most of the mental health challenges facing New Zealand a lot of these causes you will be familiar with. So we have a genetic link. There is a, some evidence to suggest that there may be a genetic link. Now when we're talking genetics in this instance, we are referring of course to our gene pool. So those things that are passed down through our families. There's also suggestion that um, some brain or neuron damage may provide some possible clues into our susceptibility to schizophrenia. And there's another really interesting theory called the dopamine theory that kind of talks a little bit about how dopamine fails to interact properly in certain neurons within our brain. Uh, and the, the research sort of suggests that that may be a contributing factor to schizophrenia also. One of the other really interesting things that I came across as I was researching for this particular um, episode tonight was an intestinal tract dysfunction. So uh, how how the gut flora uh, may have been compromised in some way and how that has led to a susceptibility uh, not just in schizophrenia but um, some other uh, forms of mental health challenges such as psychosis and bipolar and a whole range of others. Um, I guess also, there's a lot of strong evidence to suggest that substance use, particularly those psychoactive uh, drugs, those recreational drugs, uh, may have or has had a significant contributing factor in many people who have experienced the symptoms of schizophrenia. Some of those drugs, including marijuana, um, uh, there's a real um, uprise in cases associated with P and um, I think also if we think in terms of magic mushrooms, anything that's going to really change our brain's ability to distinguish reality from, I, guess, I suppose, non-reality. Um, some research has suggested that in utero infections, so uh, as our mums were pregnant, any infections that they may have caught that we struggled with in utero um, may lead also to um, not just schizophrenia again, but to um, many other mental health challenges. And the last one that uh, there's some strong suggestions uh, in the research 
uh, is the environmental factors. So those factors outside of our control, particularly as we're growing up um, and into our adolescent years or our young adult years, the environmental factors, and again, quite often out of our control. But out of all of this research, do you know what I came up with? I came up with the fact that your guess is probably as good as the researchers guess. They just don't know definitively what leads to some people developing the symptoms of schizophrenia and what doesn't. But what they do know is that when a lot of these certain factors align, we kind of create the perfect mental health environment for the development of schizophrenia and many other mental health challenges. The risk really does become greater. Um, now, over the last nine years, I've spoken to and I've listened to a huge range of people who really do struggle with voices. And my research and, and, and my interactions with clients, for example, really does sort of lead me to believe that if there's one major precursor to the development of um, schizophrenia and the symptoms associated with schizophrenia. It is twofold. It is incredible stress and um, trauma. Um, you know, the alignment of um, or the coming together of very stressful uh, times in people's lives and significant trauma in their life. Um, that really does seem to lead to an increase in psychological distress. It kind of creates a psychological environment when schizophrenia really can become a major problem for these people. And, and these sort of, these symptoms, this distress um, can be severe enough to leave a very, very long lasting impression on that person many, many decades later. So, possible causes, a whole range of things. Um, and I'm researching stress and trauma at the moment um, just because I'm finding the subject really really fascinating and I'll be sure to share my insights into stress and trauma a little bit further down the track once I've I've got it all together um, up here so um, yeah now what's one of the biggest challenges facing people who live with schizophrenia now you know let's be perfectly blunt. Often the biggest challenge facing people living with schizophrenia isn't the symptoms of schizophrenia themselves, although they can be quite horrendous and quite difficult to comprehend and understand, particularly for someone living with it, let alone a loved one or a, a mum or dad supporting a son or daughter who's going through that, that, that challenge. The biggest challenge has to um, has to be the stigma associated with the diagnosis of schizophrenia. There's a lot of misconceptions out there that schizophrenia, uh, people who live with schizophrenia are um, uh, violent, um, they, are, they have multiple personalities, um, they're deranged and, and well they're nuts basically they're talking to themselves you know no no sane person does that etc etc um, and there's a lot of misconceptions about um, the recovery possibilities for people with schizophrenia as well 
Um, and that's not just in our community, it's also within our medical community um, as well. So, so I guess from listening to people who live with schizophrenia and looking at media, I, the biggest challenge has to be the stigma and discrimination facing those people living with schizophrenia. So, so anyway, next week, let's have a talk about what we can do to support somebody who is facing the challenge of schizophrenia. Um, let's talk about how we might support our loved ones if they are struggling with schizophrenia. And let's do that in a, in a passionate and a, um, an empathetic way. So until next week, I've been Troy. This has been the Black Dog Lounge. Thank you very much for joining us. I, you know, stay fantastic. And we'll catch you next week. Ka kite.